Hi, uh, my name is uh, Tan Tegzi. I'm a PhD student in uh, University of Malaysia, Sabah. The paper that I'm going to present today is an uh, Academy Color Encoding System in the Era of Digital Cinematography, a review on the implementation in Policebo 2. Um, Academy Color Encoding System, short form for ACES, in a nutshell, is basically a color management system. You are right. A lot of people does not know about ACES, uh, especially yeah. here in Asia and the, what it can do. Uh, for sure, it's something good that, that, that it should be educated to the people here. Lah. Um, to answer your question, right, I believe that a producer needs to know everything. The job of a producer right, is to be that person who creates a space for people to work. ACES is a very good format and I'm glad that they finally came up uh, with, with this format. Academy Color Encoding System, uh, which uh, stands for ACES, uh, it was launched uh, officially in 2015. It took about 10 years uh, for them to develop into version uh, 1.0 and at the moment it has already been updated into version 1.3 so the existing uh, color space uh, basically could no longer accommodate the fast uh, changing uh, digital cinema camera and also uh, digital uh, camera uh, in general uh, just basically due to how um, sensor technology have uh, uh, has come to a point where it has uh, fully matured and also with the color signs uh, from each uh, camera manufacturer uh, each uh, manufacturer have their own color sign so uh, with color space such as uh, REC 709 uh, REC 2020 DCI P3 um, so all this color space basically they are working between uh, a limit the diagram shown here uh, which is uh, CIE 1976 uh, chromaticity diagram uh, you can see that actually ACES has a wider spectrum. Basically ACES is uh, trying to unify other color space so that uh, cinematographers uh, or in post-production it will unify all the uh, color space under this uh, ACES uh, umbrella and ACES is basically uh, based on the ASUS uh, 2065 uh, one Without ASUS, there's no standardization. Uh. So there's a quote from uh, Geoff uh, Boyle. Uh, he stated that uh, when we went fully digital, it became the wild west. Uh, the transition from film to uh, digital, uh, it was the biggest problem that uh, all the filmmakers are facing. Post-production technology has uh, gone through the evolution in the last 10, 20 years. Uh, it's been a cow cowboy town. It's been, um, very, everyone can come in with a gun and start shooting everyone. So um, the format of every single, uh, um, every, every camera maker, they have their own format. Because of that, everyone have their own format. And it's very difficult if you are shooting on various camera trying to mash the color and also the exact uh, the color space and also the details. Um, what what uh, most of the time you need to kind of like eyeball it or just look at the histogram and try to to somehow match it. But that's not an exact science. You're still a slave to whoever's looking and whoever is coloring it. You, you have to rely on that person. To make sure that everything match um, but with aces aces uh, the the people who came up with aces said uh look let's take out this guess work this guessing work um uh, let's let's have this thing let's say between sony and ari let's have some sort of a certain standard that bridge between these two and it's, it's not eyeballing uh trying to match the color by eye but let's have mathematically something transformation that can match two colors so you have no issue intercutting. In a nutshell, ACES is basically a free open source system uh, that manages uh, colors uh, and it is interchangeable between post-production pipeline. This lead me to my problem statement. Uh, ACES is not very well exposed uh, among uh, Malaysian uh, filmmakers. Uh, 
basically it's the lack of knowledge that uh, causes uh, uh, ASUS not to be so popular uh, in uh, Malaysia uh, and also with this um, it has an uh, adverse effect on the quality of the moving uh, images the color space that has been used uh, in uh, a project it is very problematic due to uh, it is an uh, irreversible uh, process so once you are set in REC 709 uh, your final output will be REC 709 and it is not uh, reversible to uh, where you want them so using police EO as a case study uh, this is to demonstrate how uh, Police Evil 2 uh, implemented uh, ACES uh, in the system. The objective of this article is basically to uh, create uh, awareness and to basically examine how uh, ACES uh, was uh, implemented in uh, Police Evil 2 and also to analyze how uh, ACES uh, benefited the whole uh, uh, motion uh, picture in itself. This uh, leads me to my uh, research uh, methodology where I'm using an uh, action uh, research uh, approach. Uh, it is using uh, my first-hand experience as a cinematographer on a job and also as a researcher uh, uh, on how uh, ACES was uh, implemented in the uh, film itself and also uh, interviewing uh, industrial uh, practitioners on how uh, ACES uh, could uh, uh, benefit the whole uh, uh, system uh, in Malaysia. In Police Evil 2, ACES was uh, predetermined due to my previous experience uh, in using ACES, uh, which I use it on the film called uh, Basker. Uh, why Police Evil 2 become more uh, important in utilizing uh, ASUS was uh, partly due to because we were using three uh, camera uh, system. Uh, the main camera uh, we were using was the Panasonic Pericam 35 and using the internal recorder, uh, the codec is uh, AVC44444 and uh, it was uh, utilizing the VLOG uh, profile. But on the red, we were shooting on the raw on the compression 3 to 1. And so that was a uh, completely different uh, from uh, uh, Panasonic very uh, very cam 35 and also uh, using Sony A7s uh, but output to a 4k uh, uh, recorder uh, using the x log uh, profile fundamentally all the color space uh, that exists uh, today are using the red green and blue and using the CIE uh, uh, visible color spectrum chart. ASUS uh, uh, definitely has a wider color spectrum. When you have a, a wider color spectrum, you have a high uh, fidelity of uh, color information. How ASUS work is basically uh, it's a standard linear uh, color space where it uh, uses a 16-bit uh, uh, float uh, system uh, that allow for 30 sort of uh, dynamic range. Uh and also it is an open source system uh, that uh, allow for cross-platform uh, and on the principal photography transmission over uh, HD SDI uh, uh, during uh, uh, principal photography this is uh, really uh, important so that we have the right um, uh, look uh, on the uh, monitoring um, so with all this it uh, allowed uh, for a streamlined uh, workflow uh, during uh, principal photography until uh, post uh, production uh, to the uh, final output. So this uh, brings me to share uh, my experience of how I uh, implemented uh, ACES uh, during uh, Police Evil 2. Uh, first, um, a camera test should be done to determine uh, which uh, camera that the cinematographer want to use. And once all that has been uh, confirmed, uh, uh, the production should actually engage a production house and 
go through sequence of discussion of what uh, kind of color ma- management uh, that they want to use and if they decide ACES is the system uh, to go then uh, then uh, ACES uh, workflow should be uh, should be set on it so at the time of our principal photography uh, a set of calibrated monitor should be always there just so that the cinematographer know uh, what is uh, going on uh, with the uh, system uh, usually a DIT is really important uh, in this uh, in this uh, uh, principal uh, photography uh, but uh, for police evil because uh, just basically just due to my uh, knowledge in uh, in uh, color grading uh, software uh, we skip the uh, digital uh, imagining technician which is what we call a DIT I would usually get the footage from the data wrangler at the end of the shoot of every day and uh, bring it back and uh, and uh, color grade it using uh, DaVinci Resolve and my uh, iMac is calibrated uh, monitor so that I know actually what I, I'm getting on this slide that we're looking at on the left and the right picture practically there's very little uh, visible color discrepancies uh, uh, in the steel itself uh, that is to really prove that ACES uh, could actually manage uh, different uh, color space uh, quite well and in this slide that I'm showing the character Rian and Kai uh, in this, uh, in this uh, frame uh, if you look at the outside, uh, it's the uh, very uh, amber color and inside it's a bit of a cyan uh, color on it. Uh, with the amber tone outside, if you were to use uh, P3 color space or LEC 709 color space, uh, the color fidelity uh, might not survive uh, just practically due to the color information that is uh, uh, available uh, uh, in the uh, in the color space so with ACES it actually helped uh, the production uh, tremendously uh, by allowing the cinematographer to actually explore uh, more colors uh, which uh, in P3 or in REC 709 or in REC 2020 uh, uh, which might not be able to achieve uh, just basically due to uh, the uh, gel that was being used uh, it's transmitting uh, color uh, greater than what uh, REC 709 and uh, P3 are able to uh, perceive so this come to the end of the presentation and I'll leave you uh, with the trailer of uh, Police Evil 2 I uh, hope uh, you enjoy it thank you